Digest. True stories from real life have been the pages of the most famous red magazine in the world. he first met her, Paris in the spring in the year 1877. Paris of gay living, of high hopes and of soaring ambitions. Then as now, Mecca of artists, of poets and of dreamers. Has that cousin of mine shown up yet? No, monsieur, he's not even arrived. Oh, late again. Lewis is never on time any place. Really? How about a Beaujolais to start with? Oui, monsieur. Beaujolais. You make this cousin of yours appear quite disreputable enough to be intriguing. <laughs> ah, there he is now. Bobby! Welcome back to Paris. I'm a late. So sorry. I couldn't recall where we said we'd meet. My dear boy, we didn't expect you to be on time. Too shocking if you had been. <laughs> Fanny, may I present my cousin, Louis Stevenson, Fanny Osborne. Oh, yes, la belle Américaine. Well, it's about time we met. So you're from the United States, Mrs. Osborne. From California. Oh, the Wild West. You don't look wild. Well, some of us in San Francisco, at least, rather fancy that we're on our way to becoming civilized. <laughs> and how was your little excursion through the Savannes? Oh, uneventful, except for Modestine. Modestine? And pray, who is she? She is the most contrary, headstrong, obstinate, four-legged female donkey in all of France. Oh, a donkey? Well, you needn't sound so disappointed. She was an exceptional donkey. And if you're patient, she may soon read all about her. And me. I kept a sort of journal, which my publishers this very morning have agreed to put out. Oh, how nice. Good boy, Louis. This is a celebration, then. We'll drink to its success. Well, what do you call it? Travels with a donkey. Do you like it? Oh, sounds promising. Uh, <laughs> what is it? Are you all right? I feel dizzy. Oh, now I remember. I forgot to eat. Oh, really, Louis? You are the limit. Antoine. Do you do this often? Louis needs a nurse to look after him. Some food for Louis Antoine. Sorry, not very nice spoiling our first meeting this way. What must you think of me? Well, I think you're very irresponsible not to take care of yourself. Travels with a donkey, indeed. <laughs> Which donkey were you referring to? Well, you could always tell us apart. Modestine was the one who ate. <laughs> well, here's to it. Success to travels with a donkey. <laughs> Regardless of which donkey. <laughs> <laughs> May I come in? Mrs. Osborne. Well, what a delightful surprise. <laughs> I just had to come. I've read Travels with the Donkey. Well, have you come to praise or bury Caesar? You're not just a good writer. You're a great writer. Oh, do go on. You have style and feeling, and you're an artist. I've ordered copies of all your other works. Are they as good? Well, I sincerely hope so. Oh, that darling modesty. <laughs> Was she really as much trouble as all that? Well, she had her moments. You bless the man who invented a stop stick with a tack on the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, don't you think you might invite me to stay for tea? Oh, I'm so sorry. Give me. <laughs> Well, you better let me see if there is any tea. Now, there was some yesterday. I don't know. I'll, I'll just look.
rest of the summer, they were together constantly. She took care of him, saw that he ate properly, exercised, worked, discussed ideas with him, read his scripts. Well, did you finish it? Yes, I did. And? Well, I'm not quite sure. You didn't like it? Well, yes and no. It, it's oh, just you didn't that... go on. It's quite dreadful. Why don't you say it? Well, it's just that it isn't up to your other work, that's all. It's, it's hasty and ill thought out. Well, I thought it out quite carefully. It may not be well written. Perhaps I can't write. But it certainly was thought out. I didn't say you couldn't write. I merely said it wasn't up to your standard. And you needn't get so huffy about Who's it. Who's being huffy? I'm perfectly capable of standing criticism. But if you don't like my work, you don't like it, that's oh, all. You're being hopelessly childish. Let us not be personal. We're discussing my work, not my age. Very well, then, Lewis, your work. It needs rewriting. It's too glib, all on the surface. You write too well for your own good. It's shallow. So, now I'm shallow. Well, what blatant egoism. Can't you disassociate yourself from your writing? Oh, what's the use of bickering? It's obviously terrible. A great failure. That was the most adolescent demonstration I have ever witnessed. Really, Mr. Stevenson, you disappoint me. Fanny! Louis! He followed her to California. There, amongst the craggy rocks of Monterey, they painted and wrote, spending the long and pleasant days together within sound of the roaring surf. You're quiet today. Am I? You look depressed. Yes, I'm afraid I am. Forgive me. Feeling ill again? No, no more than usual. What is it? I've got I've... to go back to Edinburgh next week. Oh? I'm, I'm afraid my father's disappointed in me. See, he doesn't approve of writing as a profession. To him, it's a hobby. He'd like me to be an engineer like himself and build lighthouses as he does. I should certainly hate to live in the lighthouse you build, darling. <laughs> oh, how can I live without you, Fanny? Must you? Oh, my dear. It can't be. It can never be. Why not? You love me, don't you? Oh, you know. I, I can't explain. Is it... Is it worry about money? No, not that. You know things have been looking up a bit lately. Suicide Club will be out shortly, and Prince Otto's already in the publisher's hands. Since she helped me, I've done quite well. Then what is it? You say you love me. You know I love you. What can it be? Is it because I'm divorced? Oh, who cares about that? What's that schoolgirl romance to do with us? Your family and friends may not be as broad-minded as you are about a divorced woman. Who cares what they think? <laughs> no. It's this wretched health of mine, these constant colds and this miserable cough. I've no right to marry. I'm not well. I've been a sniveling invalid all my life. I've spent so much time locked up in a sick room. I feel like a, like a weevil in a biscuit. Is that all? Isn't it enough? How can I ask you to tie yourself to a wreck of a man made up entirely of aches and pains? But if you're sick, darling, that's all the more reason you need me. But I don't want you for a nurse. I want you... I want you for my wife. Then have me for your wife. Have me for your wife, my darling. And so, as man and wife, they returned to Scotland, braving the dark, damp climate as they braved parental disapproval with courage and gallantry.
Ah, it is a fine, sturdy city, our Edinburgh. None of your soft, puling It's a fine city, certainly, but doesn't it ever stop raining? Ah, it is a bitter cold climate. Rain and fog and stormy wind. But you get used to it. <coughs> Lewis, I'm thinking of. <coughs> oh, don't worry about me. I'm accustomed to it. You certainly don't sound like it. What in the name of heaven have you done with this roast? We tried to keep it hot, sir. I'm afraid it's a bit overdone. Overdone? She's <laughs> burned to a crisp. And the first night his only son is home from abroad with his bride. Oh, dumb as can dare skulk it. I start scoring. Oh, stop shouting. I? I said stop shouting. Taking advantage of helpless people who can't answer back. And if you ever dare to raise your voice against them while I'm in this house, I'll... I'll raise mine against you. <laughs> Do sit down, Vasily. I see you're a stormy petrol. I believe you've met your match, Father. <laughs> She's a saucy lass, there's no denying that. But what cause she had to run off and marry a sickly whelp who scribbles for a living is more than I know. <laughs> Look, <Lewis, laughs> darling. I'll get your medicine. Spouse him again. You have no the strength of this country, lad. I'll, I'll be all right. <coughs> Never seen him like this before. He's had it all his life. It's the weakness in his lungs. What? Yes, Rasky. Did you not know? I'll send for Dr. Mather. <coughs> Complete rest. A journey here is tired. I'll have something sent up from the apothecary to ease the coughing. How bad is it, Doctor? Do you want the truth? Is it that serious? Mrs. Stevenson, your husband is dying. Oh, no. I've told you, Tommy, before, it could only be a matter of time. Poor lad. He may live another six months. With complete rest and good nursing and a careful diet. Possibly a year at the outside. I can promise no more. I'm sorry, Mrs. Stevenson. I'll do everything I can to help him. And you'd best not tell his mother. She's not too strong herself. Good night, Tommy. Good night. It's been too much for him, all this. The lad ever was afraid. He shouldn't have taken on the responsibility of marriage. That's why I was against it, lass. It's no fair to you. Oh, it's, it's wretched climate. No wonder he's ill. Nothing but rain and fog and bitter cold wind. That's what's killing him. He needs warmth and sunshine. I'm going to take him back to Paris, to the south of France, where there's sun. Possibly it may help some, but I'm feared it's too late, lass. No, no, he can't die. I won't let him. You're a brave woman, daughter. But don't set your hopes too high, for he's a sick man, and death sits within him. He must live. I'll make him live. Well, dear. How long did old Sawbones allow me? Since due to a ripe old age. And uh, I told you it was risky marrying me. I wouldn't have it any other way. All right. You know what I've been mooning about all day? About me, of course. Sorry, dear. About a new story. It's been taking shape in my mind. Wait till you hear it. It'll make your hair stand on end. It's going to be a tale of the sea. Ships and buccaneers and buried treasure and coral reefs full of yo-ho-ho and bottles of rum. I shall make Dr. Mather, the ship's cook. He'll be a seafaring man with one leg, and his name shall be Long John Silver. I'm torn between calling it the sea cook or treasure island. Which do you prefer? Treasure Island, by all means. Do you think I'll live long enough to write it? Of course you will. 
We'll find a climate in which you can live if we have to travel to the ends of the earth. But live you shall. But Lewis did not die that year as the doctor predicted, or the next. It was Fanny's grim determination which seemed literally to will him to live. For the next few years, her life was spent wandering around the world, seeking a climate that would restore him to health and strength. She took him first to southern France, then to Saranac, then to California, and finally chartered a schooner and set sail for the South Seas. is positively frightening, my dear. It's all that practice I had with those rattlesnakes in Monterey. <laughs> Wife, mother, mistress, nurse, secretary, business manager, and sharpshooter. Oh, you're really a paragon of virtues, Fanny. You sound pretty chipper this morning. <laughs> Must have had a good morning's work. How's it going? Go ahead. I um, sneaked to look at the last chapter. I hope you don't mind. And? Mm, it's all right for a first draft. It's the second draft. Oh? Well, the third will be better. I wasn't planning on a third. You should. It's much too labored. I don't find it so. You know, really, Fanny, you're something of a remarkable woman, but you haven't the faintest knowledge when it comes to literature. I was right about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You had no theme until you rewrote it. Well, don't let it go to your head. Why is it labored? It's full of fancy talk. It's not fancy. And whenever I try for a little you know, style, you call it fancy. I don't care what you call it, it's fancy. It's not. It is. Not? It is. It... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Lewis, you're such a baby about your work. Well, you're such a fiend about it. Oh, but you're right. I only get angry when I'm wrong. I must go over it. It's gotten all out of hand. Oh, darling. Oh. Oh. oh, life's been good to me. I'm a fortunate man. You know, I've never felt so well. These South Seas agree with me. There's a peace and gentleness in the air that soothes me. Perhaps we've come home. After all our wanderings. We might settle down on one of the islands. Would that suit you? A beautiful tropical island with coconut trees, coral reefs, and a blue lagoon. Journeys and... Home is the sailor home from the sea and the hunter home from the hill. <laughs> Looks as if we're in for a blow. It's funny. Huh? It's funny how suddenly these squalls come up out here. Ah. <laughs> here. Come in. Captain says, better be ready with your life preservers. Thanks. Well, it appears we're in for it. Doesn't sound very promising. A water ray finish. Well, I never thought of it happening that way. In bed with a hack and cough, yes, but not drowning. Do you really think we're in danger? It's a pretty sturdy boat. Pretty sturdy storm. Oh, dear. Oh, how unfair for you. Oh, don't think for a moment I haven't known what you've been in for since you married me. The sleepless nights, the weary weeks and months while I've been confined to a sick room, and the years of exile away from civilization. And now here we are, about to wind up at the bottom of the sea. What more wonderful way to go than together. Each other's arms. No regrets. Hmm? Glad have I lived and gladly died. Oh, my dear. Mm -hmm. 
nothing without you. My work, my life. All of it you gave to me. No, no, you gave me life. A beautiful and abundant life. Whatever happens, I can meet it cheerfully. And with courage. Because of you, who have taught me the meaning of these things. I have no fear because you have no fear. Together, if need be. Certainly, we're not at the bottom of the sea. It's much too dry. We better investigate. Uh. Uh. Look! Oh. Your island. Huh. I can't believe it. Where did it come from? must have sprung up out of the sea. Coconut palms, blue lagoon, coral reefs and all, a gift of the storm. That's the island of Upolo, sir, Samoan archipelago. Oh. The island of Upolo, indeed. It's our island. <laughs> <laughs> So, for sixpence and a song, they bought 300 acres of cool virgin forest overlooking the blue waters of the sea far below. Let's name it Five Rivers for those five little streams at the edge of the estate. Estate, did you say? What is our estate? We bought it, didn't we? Oh, how do you say Five Rivers in Samoan? Sole. Oleale. Oleale inoha. Oh, Vailima. You would say Vailima. Vailima, it's a wonderful sound. How do you like it? I like it very much. It has a permanent sound. Yes, Vailima, the famous island home of the Robert Louis Stevensons, became an accomplished fact. And here they did indeed live happily. Louis grew brown with health and in the four years that followed, successful and famous beyond their wildest dreams. Thanksgiving dinner that year, surrounded by their friends from the neighboring islands, saw the culmination of Fanny's dreams, the crowning moment of this valiant woman's life of sacrifice, adventure, and romance. Oh, hi. <laughs> My friends, I'd like to drink a toast to the most wonderful woman I've ever known. My wife. To her, I've dedicated my latest novel. Take thou the writing. Thine it is. For who burnished the sword, blew on the drowsy coal, held still the target higher, cherry of praise, and prodigal of counsel? Who? Two nights later, Fanny Osborne Stevenson stood on the veranda looking up at the friendly mountain where her beloved husband lay under the wide and starry sky. They had been together for 14 short years. Lewis, apparently in full health, was struck down as if by the gods in a clear and glorious hour. It was fitting that Robert Louis Stevenson should be buried on a mountain peak and that his wife, Fanny, a most unforgettable character indeed, should join him there 20 years later with his immortal tribute to her inscribed on the tomb they share together. Teacher, tender comrade, wife, a fellow fairer who through life, heart whole and soul free, the august father gave to me.